Hey folks, it's Lindsay Huddleston back in the building again, another SPS mental health moment. Man, this has been a great time. Uh, the people I get to talk to and people I get to meet. But in this particular case, it's very, very special because I knew these young men when they weren't even here. Uh, having a great relationship with their mom, uh, going way back to uh, middle school, just being good friends growing up. Uh, then Latoya Weeks. Uh, and now I want to introduce to you the product uh, of Miss Weeks, the Mac Brothers in the building. How you guys doing? Pretty good. good. How are you? Good. We got Andre and Austin holding it down, uh, representing those 30th birthdays. You say uh, May 30th and December 30th, right? Yes, yes, sir. Right. 13 and 14 years old, respectfully. Uh, when we were talking offline, we talked about introductions, and I like to be able to focus on what people are working on, but y'all broke it down. You said, look, man, we just the Mac Brothers. We have an empire. Uh, we have a number of things we're doing. We're dealing with getting resources for our work through our GoFundMe. Uh, promoting our new single, Legacy, as well as our new book as well. So without further ado, I want to introduce the Mac Brothers and let you guys uh, share on this platform uh, who you are, what you're all about, and what you're trying to get up across. So you guys have the floor. Uh, please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and tell us what's going on with you. Hi, my name is Austin Mack, and I'm Andre Mack, and we are the Mack Brothers, owners and operators of Mack Brothers Holdings. My brother and I own four profitable businesses, Mac Brothers Lawn Service, where we have 22 contracted customers. This is our fifth year going on where we, and we also have four employees, both adult and both adult and uh, youth, Mac Brothers Publishing, uh, where we have sold over 30,000 copies of our book, Mac Brothers Lawn Service. It's a flip book for both ladies, and both males. Mac uh, apply IT, our software development company, where we create apps and cognitive simulating games. And also, 3030 Music Group. Well, that's our record label where we use that to promote legacy. And we have two singles out, Bang Bang and Legacy. Legacy you can find on any music outlet and that's what we're doing, such as YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, anything. Run down. Hey, man, I'm trying. Y'all got to help me with my book sales. Y'all got 30,000 book sales. I'm trying to get on with the Back Brothers, you know? That's what's up. Well, great, man. I remember Bang Bang, and like I, we were talking, uh, that legacy cut, and you guys got to check it out with whoever's listening, because y'all got a line on there, man. It's like a Jay Z bar. You like, uh, that's the difference between a hustler, baby. Never broke again. I ain't a customer, baby. Oh, man, that touched my heart. <laughs> Young Nipsey the Builder. So um, knowing that you guys come from a very uh, talented and very loving family, I remember just growing up, knowing your family growing up, uh, your, your grandmother, your, your aunts and whatnot, and, of course, your mom. You know, uh, how have you guys been able to take all the great things around you and form your own brand uh, being the Mac Brothers? How's that been for you? Well, it's been pretty exciting, like, because me and my brother, we've always had a dream that we want to make something for ourselves. We don't want to work for anybody. Like, we want to we wanna work for ourselves. That's how we always see. So it was kind of like being an entrepreneur and all that uh, type of stuff. It really came naturally. You know what I mean? It really came, like, I don't even know how to put it. It was so long ago. And it was just kind of like, it was amazing. Like it felt good to own your own business. That's how I feel. Sure, Andre. You know, when I hear your brother Austin talk like that, I'm reminded of what it feels to be an entrepreneur myself. And it's like, once you taste that, you can't go back. Something my mother told me years ago, and I try to tell it to my daughter. She's eight now. When I was probably younger than you guys, I remember like all oh, kids. I love the ice cream truck. You guys like the ice cream truck when it come through, right? So yeah. I had an idea. I had a plan, fellas. I said, you know what? If I go work on an ice cream truck, I can have all the ice cream I want. And you know what my mother told me in all her wisdom right then that changed my life at that moment? She said, no, babe, you don't want to work on a truck. You want to own a company. And when my mother put that into me very young, that changed my whole outlet. And I really think it's important that you get that kind of wisdom early on. Now, the other side of it is everybody don't want to be a boss. Everybody don't want to do what it takes. Some people are totally fine. We're going to work nine to five, and I don't. I respect that. So, you know, what what is it that keeps you guys motivated 
to keep pushing and working and kind of not, you know, giving up because you've accomplished more as a 13 and 14 year old, respectfully, than most adults accomplish. What keeps you going? Well, I kind of knew, I already knew this question was coming. What keeps us going is remembering our family. Remember who, uh, where we're doing this for. Don't get uh, blindsided about the money and stuff like that. I'm just saying like, up to me and my brother, family is everything. So I just want to keep on pushing until we make it. You know what I'm saying? Right. What What does we make it look like when you talk about goals, dreams, goals, and aspirations? I'm talking about, I'm talking about legacy. That's what I mean. <laughs> I'm talking about legacy, like not just living in a uh, mansion with a uh, with my whole family and like having our own reality show, something like that. I mean, like actually building our legacy so we could leave one from our um, next generation of our family. And being able to take care of others instead of just being taking care of ourselves, being able to take care of others in our family. Well, since we're like family, I'm going to drop something on you guys. Another life-changing moment I had. The first I told you about was when I was in uh, like elementary school. And the next I'm going to tell you about, I was in college. I was home for break and it was my grandmother's birthday and we went to a very exclusive restaurant called Excalibur. It's no longer around. It was in, you know, uh, you know, Oakland County, Southfield area. And I remember seeing a, a group of very influential men having dinner with their family. And I remember looking at those guys and saying, hey, what can I do to be able to do this for my family? Similar to how you guys are talking. I never forget what the guy, he asked me this question. He said, who's the most important person in your life? And after I went through so many things, he finally said, no, you're the most important person because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't do anything for anyone else. So when I hear you two young men talking about being able to take care of other people, I was compelled to share that story. So how does it work for you guys as a 13-year-old and a 14-year-old when you have your peers who may not be thinking like you are? Do they, do they have conflict when they're around you? Are they overwhelmed when you kind of come into the, into the room and talk about what you're doing? Or do they, like, get inspired by what you're doing and try to be like you guys? They really get in inspired. And plus, it's kind of like with most of our um, outspoken friends, it's like they got to have proof. There's really no proof we can get them but show them what we do. Oh, so, so wait a minute. So when you tell somebody, you know, we're the Mac brothers, we got a hold and come, we have successful, but they're like, show me, prove it to me. That's exactly. What they say. Well, it's, it's a difference between me and him. Like, everybody know what I do, and I prove it, and people know what I do. With his friends, they're younger, and so it's harder to prove that to them. All, okay. all so how do you, how do, Andre, how do you prove it to him? Look me up. Look me up on Google. That's hey, it. Google me, baby. You say right. Google me. Yeah, you can Google me. So Andre, what happens when they Google? When they when they they take their phone right then and they Google you and some and something pops up to validate what you guys are saying, how do they respond then? Oh, you famous, famous and speechless. I'm like You say what? What did Dre, what'd you say? Speechless. They're speechless? And what yeah, you say also, they call you famous famous. Like you ain't you famous famous, huh? Yeah, well, your, mom, your mom would know about this. They catch the vapors toy. They catch the vapors like back in the day with Biz Marquis. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, man. That is awesome. I, I know you guys are inspiring young people your age, but just like I said, with the with the lyrics you guys have, I'm sure you're inspiring adults. What does it feel like when adults kind of gravitate to you guys and are really receptive to you and really are like, okay, tell me more about what you're doing and how you did what you did? Because I know it has to happen. Has that happened before? Yes, it's really like when they tell, it's like when they tell, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it's like when they really, like when we really tell our story to them, it's kind of like they want their kids to be involved with us. So immediately they start bringing their kids around. Now, see, that got to put a little pressure. I said, you know what? It's probably not pressure for you. Does it make it uncomfortable when you know, here we go. Now they're going to tell their kids to come meet me. Now they're going to tell their daughters. No matter how old they are, to come meet me. Now they're going to tell their sons, you should be like that. I mean, is this all the stuff that happens? Yeah, that and plenty more. Everybody. <laughs> What's the plenty more, Dre? What's the plenty more? Everybody just loves to meet us for some reason. Like, they automatically gravitate towards us. 
I mean, it might be the energy we put out, but also it's how it also is how we carry ourselves. I, I've heard a lot that we carry ourselves carry ourselves very mature for our ages, and we and we know how to handle business and then have, and then know how to play and have fun at the same time. You see, what's funny, man, is that the advantage I have having been able to grow up as a friend of your mom and knowing how she was like you guys were when we were your age, if not more beyond, because as a female uh, involved in, in, in the uh, music industry, I mean, and we didn't have social media to really put us out there. So I can only imagine you guys are getting the benefit of that. So, so let me ask this, you know, uh, it's easy for, is it easy for you guys or is it hard for you with the things that you do? Uh, it's, it's really easy. Like we can get, we can get anywhere and do our elevator pitch or we can do our one hour pitch without even having to like go rehearse it. Like, like actually I just, I just got fun to finish doing some classes with Wayne State and my mom just reminded me, Oh, you got an interview coming right up. And I said, dang, I forgot. And so my mom was like, do y'all pitch and just say what y'all doing. It's like, it comes really easy now. Austin, what are you going to say? I would say, like, earlier, like, when probably a year or so back, it w it was stressful because, you know, like, as a as a teenager and a child, it's kind of like you need to, like, you want to choose fun stuff over business stuff. And when you grow older, it's kind of like the business, like, fun can only last, fun, fun can only last for a couple of seconds. But it's like, if you have if you work hard and if you focus hard it's kind of like you can have more fun in the future i get it no that's that's what i as an adult at 44 years old you know 30 years your, your senior can say that let me ask you a few more things guys uh while i have you here um mm -hmm. you know i guess it comes down to what's what's a normal i shouldn't say what's a normal day like but what's your normal uh daily routine to help you guys stay focused and keep things in order. You know, uh, I think the routines are very important from getting up in the morning, making your bed, just to start setting a goal to other things. So would you guys have a, a daily routine that kind of helps you stay on point? Can I answer this question? No, let me answer, answer everything. Well, no, no, both of you guys are going to answer. How about that? Yeah. Okay, Andre, we'll start with you. Oh, it's all about preparation. It Well, what a daily routine is – Get out of bed early. What'd you call early? What time are you getting up? Uh, I, get around, I, I get around like 7 o'clock, 7.30, 7 o'clock. Andre, you up at 7? No, <laughs> usually I wake up around 9, but <laughs> our, our schedule is a little busier. Also, don't look but, like that. Don't be looking like that when he said he wake up at 9. Go ahead. <laughs> I, wake, I wake up around 9, 9.30 usually, yeah. but now that our schedule is a little busier, I wake up around 7, 7.30. Okay. But I don't wake up like my body doesn't tell me to wake up. <laughs> like my body would keep me asleep till 10, really. Okay, but, who goes to bed the latest? Who goes to bed the latest? <laughs> well, yeah. I, mean, that's me because I would say him because, like, I'm at night, I'm a Netflix and chill type person. Like, I would just go to sleep. Like, I would watch. The show. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Now, me, I'm like working 24 7 day until I wake up, till I go to bed. I, I go to bed late, and then my mom be saying, go, go to bed. I go to bed, then I don't wake up till about 10. <laughs> but now I, I have to set an alarm. At like seven thirty in the morning, I'd be irritated too because that's early for me. That's, that's like early for you. that's well, like too I, early. Well, okay, well, some of us get up at four o'clock in the morning, Dre. I know I've heard of it, and it's, <laughs> it's really tough. The the I've heard of, of it, and it sounds very tough. The latest time I probably went to sleep is nine a.m. Like I stayed up throughout. You'll stay the up night. till nine, huh? Grind, mm -hmm. grind. Now you guys, uh. Now, I know school is different for everybody right now, but when and if school starts back up, where do you guys go to school at? How do you go about your schooling? Oh, we really do. We do a lot of stuff, actually. We do co-ops with different uh, classes. Uh, we do a lot of speaking engagements, so we're partially homeschooled also. Oh, great, great. Because uh, we do a lot of speaking engagements during... You guys got a TED Talk. Talk. You've been on the, on the famous TED Talk stage, right? Yes, we have. Okay, okay. 
Well, listen, man, what I want people to be able to do, if, they, if they've been living under a rock and they don't know about the Mac Brothers, I want them to be able to follow you guys, keep an eye on them. So what social media and all other platforms can you share that our viewers can uh, follow you so they can keep an eye on what you guys are doing? You can follow us at The Mac Brothers on Instagram. And then you can also follow us on Facebook through my mom's Facebook, Latoya Mac. And then you can uh, go to our website, uh, mm -hmm. www.macbrothersholdings.com, mm -hmm. where, where you can also purchase our book right here. And then, you can all, and then you can also go over and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Mac Brothers. The Mac Brothers. I want to make sure everyone is doing that. So with the time I have, we'll let both of you guys uh, have an equal amount of time. Uh, yeah, one other question. How do you guys battle, like, when you kind of have issues with each other? My brother passed away, but we used to go at it until I got older and got my driver's license, and I didn't have to need him to get around. So how do, what, how do you guys deal with conflict with each other? Really? It's no conflict unless it's business-wide. Like, awesome. I would say when we were younger, it used to be, like, some like art, some petty arguments like you stole my socks, <laughs> I stole my candy bar type thing. But now, if it's kind of like work, like our lawn service type thing, like we get into an argument about this, like you got the wrong whip line, or I got the better whip line, that type of thing. Now, we still do get into a couple petty arguments. But I just let him talk his junk because <laughs> I'm older than him by like a year and some change. And I'll be getting my license way before he even thinks about getting his license. Ooh, ooh. And then he'll be like, take me over to my girlfriend's house. <laughs> Yo, I want to pick up my girlfriend. You got to act like you my chauffeur. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He about to be doing about? all of that. Hey man, like listen, it. listen. When the reality show come out, I don't got to be on it. I just want to know about it so I can watch it. I want to see y'all <laughs> go through it, man, and do it. Look, I'm so let's let's do it like this. Let let's give ourselves some time after this episode that we're doing, and let's loop back around in the future when you guys got another thing you want to announce. If you want to use this to be able to keep getting the word out, and then also uh, let people see you guys and your growth and what you're doing. So. Okay, so final words from both of you guys before we sign off. Um, um, I just want to inspire every every youth, every youth that's watching. And I just hope you will take a piece of me and my brother's story and what we said today and apply it to yourself. Because when you have a business, it could just change your world. So keep doing what you're doing. Stay in school. <laughs> Very good. Andre, what you got? Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Make sure you're doing something productive every day. Just because we're in a slight quarantine now, now, now that we're not in the full fledged, make sure you're doing something to help yourself in the future and not just in the present. Wow. Great advice from Mr. Andre and Austin Mack, together known as the Mack Brothers. Special shout out to your mom, Miss Latoya Mack who I know was uh, always behind the scenes making everything happen. I know she's proud, uh, as she okay. should be. So with that, guys, I'm going to let you go. We're going to get this out here and make sure people are supporting you, what's going on. But congratulations to you and all your hard work. And I know you're going to be uh, a blessing and inspiration to anyone who sees this. Thank you, Mick. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having me. Okay, you guys are good.